Yeah. Really? It's right on schedule. Though. It's been, keeping good time. There used to be a deal underneath them which you turned. It just was me sitting there to commit your meeting. I thought he was going to give you a heart attack. He had it in that pocket. I better, I better turn it off. I never bring it. I don't even do the pickup. So it don't go off. And I got to remember to get Leo to sit in my chair this morning. Yeah. That's just for sure. Oh, you stay off camera up here there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's one way to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I even had a steel mask from the treasury's department. I left. I do have it. Get both shots survived. Both chips are in my left. Both shot. chips. So I didn't get <laughs> cheese. Same thing about these masks, right? You can't see your chips with the cheese. Yeah. Is that like a dog chip? <laughs> We had our rod chipped. Ready? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to call the meeting to order and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Roll call. Mockler. Here. Packard. Here. Smith. Here. Manning. Here. Hammond. Here. Uh, any conflict of interest declarations? Hearing none, approve agenda. And we need to add lanes, drone policy updates. And Drew needed a, let me see how he worded that. <clears throat> well, for a case, legal matters, as I recall. Yeah, to get the county welfare item added to the agenda. Move to approve the agenda with those two additions. Second. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes. Motion passes. Approve minutes. Move to approve. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes. Motion passes. Any visitors to be heard? Was Leo? Oh, you're you're on the sign, aren't you? Yep, he's yeah. on the he's on the agenda. I I'm going to be a visitor to be heard today. Okay. Um, after last week's meeting, I think Betty, I think it was wildly inappropriate to to go on social media and try and torpedo our project. I mean, we we all voted in favor of it. It was a board decision, and I think to go out there and say that we were all disappointed that and this is gonna fail. And then to give the information that we're gonna build it north of town, because I don't think we've decided where we're gonna build it. I mean, it could be a possibility, yes, but I, I mean, we're commissioners. We, it, was a, it was a decision we all have to live with and stick with. I just think it was, on my personal belief, was wildly inappropriate to go out there and try and torpedo this thing. Well, <clears throat> I think I serve the people and not the commission. Um, and it is my belief, and I did not clearly speak for the whole commission. I spoke for myself and said that I was disappointed um, that my proposal did not go forward. Um, and to not communicate um, my beliefs, I think would um, you know, violate my sense of ethics. Um, uh, you know, I think one of the um, one of the concerns that the public has about the commission is that it doesn't talk, um, 
and it doesn't communicate. And my um, promise, um, you know, at the time that I was running, um, I'm going to keep uh, having been elected, which is to be as transparent as possible. And I will continue to do that. That might be easier to swallow if you would have voted against it, but you voted in favor of it. That's my personal opinion. So I'm going to leave it at that. Yep. And you are certainly entitled to your opinion. Any other visitors? I would kind of personally agree with, with what Travis just got done saying. I, I think that we have to work together. And I always feel like the point is that we've never been transparent really disgusts me because over the years, I think we've been as transparent as we possibly could be. So even when that campaign was going on, I got tired of hearing that. That wasn't the case. We've always been transparent. If anybody wanted some answers, they could certainly come to the meetings. They could certainly come and talk to us. That was not never an issue. I, yeah, I've never liked that. And I think that if, and I don't have a problem with it. If you would have voted against it, I probably would have felt a little bit better because I could have understood where you were coming from. But when you vote it for it, when you vote for something, I think you have to stand behind what you voted for. You know, even if, even if, if I voted against things in the past here that I didn't believe in, and I think every, and then that's my prerogative that and we have a responsibility to, I agree with you, we have a responsibility to listen to the people, not necessarily to the commission. However, one small group is not the whole county. And I think that's where we lose sight sometimes. And so that's all I have. Yeah, so I will just say that I am not accusing anybody of anything. Um, I'm saying what I said um, when I ran for office and what I intend to do as I go forward. Um, and I, I will always, um, you know, be on, on the side, the side of transparency. The other question is why I voted for it. And I voted for it to go forward because it's got to go forward. Um, we cannot have nothing. And once my motion failed, something needed to happen to get it to a vote. Um, and I voted to put it on the ballot. Um, that's what I voted for. Um, so if my motion fails, um, we've got to get it on the ballot somehow. And I voted to get it on the ballot. Um, and I thought very hard about not voting for it. Um, but, but I did vote for it because it needed to get on the ballot. We need to get the process going. And I've said from the very beginning um, that I don't believe um, that the public will go for the whole thing um, you know, with no provision for uh, the courthouse, I I still believe that's true, um, and I'm 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 not going to pretend that I I think it's great. Um, you know, uh, that's a little bit too much to ask. Um, I think of a fellow commissioner, um, so I will I will leave it at that. Any other visitors? Hearing none, Rod, microsurfacing bid award. Yeah, Morgan is on. Morgan? Okay. Hi. Um, I checked through the numbers and everything matched up with what their bid total was. So Aztec ended up winning that one. Um, so if you can sign that and then if Carrie could uh, scan that in and send that to me, I'll get it going, get their stuff from them that we need. So we'll take a motion to accept Aztec's um, bid for microsurfacing. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes. Motion passes. Do you have the paperwork, Rod? Or? No, I don't. Did you, did you send that? I yeah, I sent the notice of award to Carrie and Rod last week, but I can resend it if we need to. If Carrie has it, I am, or do you need her? Let to me look because I don't remember getting that, but maybe yeah, I, I did, and maybe I overlooked it. 
I don't remember seeing it either. I must. Be. I know oh. I had an issue oh, once. It. Okay, okay. It. okay. It looks like I, it didn't. sometimes Rod doesn't get my emails, so. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it. Okay, so I'll okay. just sign it after the meeting. Is that by choice? <laughs> <laughs> well, for some reason, we have trouble with our computers communicating. Yep. That's right. Okay, signs for Clay County Sportsman's Group. I did talk to Lexi. I and I hate to have Leo come again, but. Um, I think we need to gather some more information before we make this decision. <laughs> Whatever makes you happy. She's, she's been very busy. And we, she talked to me upstairs too before I come. Yep. So I think we, I think we should put this on for next week. And try and gather a little more information. By the table it again? Yeah. If, if that, if you guys are okay with that. No, I'm fine. I'd like to have a look at it. I'll move the table. The second. Next time. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes, motion passes. Can I ask you just, if, if that, do you think that's what you're looking for? The SS, SCC, or SG Club. And uh, if, we, if we go to talk about this again, I'd suggest that we put it to uh, uh, Lake County Park. Uh, shooting sports and, and leave club out of it. it not that clubs are, are, are what funds it, but uh, the whole thing of it is it's actually a Clay County Park shooting sports. Okay, Clay County. Now that didn't come from either one of the chairmen because both of them wanted, wanted the way that is. Well, actually the one didn't want to sign at all and the other one wanted it. Where... <laughs> Clay County shooting. Say that again. Clay County shooting sports. Or any other verbiage anybody can come up with that sounds something other than that. <laughs> so, yeah, because no, nobody's going to really make a heck of a lot of sense out of CCSG. Yeah. Well, that's what the guy that got a hold of me. Yeah, I know. That's the guy that so we we'll off to the club and hmm. Clay County shooting sports. That's the way I see it. Harold and Harold. Yeah. Okay. When they get down there, they'll say they have to have a club membership and then they know that they got to pay dues. Okay. But it's, it's otherwise, it's open to the public. And the color. Good fine. Yeah, that, that matches the signs that are out there, in my opinion. And, okay. well, and as far as the legality goes, I, I talked to Lexi about it yesterday, too, and I, I can't understand where there's a problem. But uh, that's whatever. I, I, you know, there's no hurry. Okay. Yeah, it's sort of alphabet soup the way it's <laughs> spelled out there. But uh, yeah, yeah, I if, kind of trying to if you out. tell. Uh, okay. I guess if uh, someone has uh, oh. been referred to it by the, a member of the club that they would tell them it was that alphabet soup to look for. And then another thing is that the uh, CCSG or whatever it is, uh, the CC is really just repeating because it says on the top of the sign that already says Clay County Park and then these things, radio, uh, rodeo grounds and so on. So if it said shooting sports and an arrow going down there, so you don't, yeah. you think it shouldn't even have Clay County on it, just put shooting sports yeah. area yeah. or something? Just shooting sports. Just shooting sports? To me, that's simple, but whatever. Yeah. It, it's, that way the sign doesn't get this long. Right. Well, so yeah. Yeah. And, and, right. And, and then I'm sure the fewer the letters, the less cost there's going to be, which is only 150 bucks to begin with. Well, look, this one's 52 inches right now to be legal. I yeah. Mean, it's got to be the same as like our street size. The okay. font is the font size the same as the ones above it then? What the lettering size is the same as the where it says Clay County Park and campground. Um, and I guess I don't know. I have <laughs> okay. I haven't checked that out. Yeah. It should match those, is what the way I see it. But so if we get shooting sports, I guess I need to know so I yeah, because I have to approve, and I didn't approve this till the meeting, so which is we'll, a good thing because they ain't been made yet. Yeah, yeah just not, just wait on it. If, if it was me, Rod, I'd let everybody stew on it for a week so they come up better working. Okay, because <laughs> I might too. Okay, if it is, that's fine. All right, thanks, thanks a lot. We'll move Appreciate on to it. move on to Terry Jensen ditch cleaning request. Uh, yeah, Terry was in here probably three years ago. Um, 
and we give him permission to clean right in front of his place. It's about a quarter of a mile. And the guy he hired made it around the corner and never came back. Uh, so he asked me, he now has his own little mini excavator. And I don't know if you all know where Terry lives, but it's a mile and a half east of, or half a mile west of the Greenfield Road is quite easier. Um, and right in front of his house is culverts. You can see about a half an inch. I mean, it's silted in and it definitely needs it. And he, he knows he's got to seed it and he's even going to flag where the old tile is. He's already dug around the tile to find out. So he'll put signs up. So if we come along and do something and I told him he has to seed it when it's done and he's good with that and told me he'd let me know when he starts and I can come up and check it. I never had a problem with him before. So I recommend that we let him do it. It's at his cost total. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Kind of okay. bring oh. up the tile. Do we, uh, do the tiles ever give you any issues where they surface into the ditch? Yes. I'm going to bring that up. I wonder if yes, haven't had a, would, would it help to require marking the end of tiles? I, I require them. If they call and ask me, and I try to get them to get it as close as they can to a culvert that goes under the road or a, a creek and try to leave it in the, in their on their property. But if it has to come out, I make them put a post up with an uh, orange top, something so we know it's there if we ever come along and we have a lot of snow, it ain't gonna matter. We'll end up messing up into the pipe, but mowing, anything like that, you know, I make them keep it in the back slope. That's, that's and what I And I guess that's just me. I don't know if we have an ordinance. Yeah, I was gonna, I don't remember seeing an ordinance on that. And, Since and we, so far, so far, you're getting along without specific authority to do that. But we, there is an ordinance that if they're going to dump into a county road ditch, they have to get permission. Right. And they, but is that what you're asking? For? Yeah. Or, or mark it to mark that in. Well, and Rod always makes them mark it. Yeah. yeah. Mark it okay. kind of was, I don't know, it was my <clears throat> idea, but I've been telling them that since we quit. Since they quit coming in to ask permission to dig and drain. Yeah. And there's like five, six guys that are doing it. And so far I haven't had any issues, but I mean, <laughs> when that time comes. I know the tile guys have got to the point, they, they tell you to mark them. Oh, it's easier. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. they said otherwise they can't, you know. Yeah, and then some of them put the critter guard on them. You know, and if that gets too far out, I make it, they have to put uh, on the bowlin oil, there's one that's about three foot tall, orange, and there was an existing tile there already, and I made them put that up, that way somebody goes in the ditch, it's crash, or, you know, it doesn't hurt the car, or yep. won't injure anybody, you know, whatever. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes. Motion passes. Structure 14 150 006, condemnation. Which one is this? I am Dean's Bridge, <laughs> to be specific. And I didn't think I'd better put that down, but I'm tired of it up to you guys. I think Alexis wants more time because she hasn't had time. So she wants it moved to next week, which I have no problem with, but I'm just saying, I have put up with this for at least three years and the state is on me. Either they're gonna take our funding away and then we're going to have to pay the $100,000 that has been spent on engineering 
and we're still going to have no wooden bridge there, which I don't care that wooden bridge falls in, but that ain't the point. We already, we've been going through this. They knew about it for six years and three years. I can't get anybody to talk to me. I run into one of the boys and he almost hid from me like the plague and I'm tired of it. I, if they don't care, I don't understand why we don't care. We are talking about such a minute little piece of ground and I should have brought the plan so I could be specific. I will next week. But we're talking about a tenth, <coughs> tenth of an acre at the end of this pipe where the culverts are gonna be, box culvert, excuse me, where the rock is gonna be. And then there's a temporary easement so in case they have to turn the loader around to get the rocks in there, after that, they ain't gonna lose any ground, but she will not get back to me. Neither one of the boys will get back to me. Have you had any luck? I talked to Joe and he was gonna to talk to John, but they want us to go, you know, go back and level that hill off to the south. I think it is, isn't it? No, the hill's to the north. To the north, but as a township that, road that's out of our jurisdiction even yeah but the cost is who's, and it doesn't need to be done who's who's uh who are you trying to get a hold of or shelly shelly landy shelly john or i don't remember i don't What's remember joe joe gerald passed away yeah. probably a year ago now and yeah. he was totally against it almost run me over up there one day told me to get out of there and is there anybody else that lives on that road? There is. No. That, that, no, there isn't. So there are uh, yeah, the only ones right that across, actually use it? Right What's across that? the road, there is. And he already signed off on it. He's a cousin. He's a land dean, too, but I can't remember. So they're the ones that, they're the only ones that actually use the road a lot? No, no, that's, no it's, it's traveled. It's traveled. And that's the big problem. The issue is the speed. Right now, it's posted 55. But they slow down because there's a wooden bridge. But when the new box culvert gets put in, it has to be posted. And I don't want to speak out of turn, but at least 35, if not 25. Yeah, I think it was, I think the was state 35. makes us put up a sign which will go into that ordinance or whatever we just did because of that hill. Yeah, the hill is, it's a pretty steep hill that's right immediately beside the bridge, isn't it? Yeah, not only that, when we had it closed, we had legal issues. That was brought up with Gerald. The sheriff put up a camera out there and caught them moving the barricades. So that turned into a big fight because we had the bridge closed and every time we drive up there, the things would be moved. And I mean, they just have been uncooperative for the last 10 years. So I'm- And they, they have to get across the bridge to the south too. I've, yeah. I've told Joe, I was like, if we don't do it, and we close the bridge, you're never going to get one again. Yeah. That's, uh, so I don't know what we, what we have to do our legal course. I know nobody likes this condemnation, but I don't know why we need it, but we're using federal and state money and they're making me jump through the hoops. Get on it. Last two weeks ago at the meeting and Deadwood, I had a big powwow with all the uppity ups and there's no give on their end. They just can't believe that nobody wants a new structure. I thought I thought there was a permanent easement too, but there's just a construction yep. easement. Now. There's just a very little permanent easement right yeah. at the end of the yeah. culvert. The one tenth of an acre is the permanent one. Okay. So anyway, and now Lexus is very busy today and she told me to and i have no problem i've waited <laughs> been dealing with for three and a half years at least so yeah leo's, be, leo's behind you giggling there he's, he's <laughs> i'm sorry i'm having a really hard time sitting here being quiet yeah Bill's <laughs> just happy he's not up here anymore well yeah. this is insane. so and we I can handed. start if we if we'll figure this out next week but we can start a conversation 
condemnation. Eminent domain. Yeah, Eminent, or that's or whatever. Whatever. I, yeah, I mean, it's the same I thing. I don't know the yeah. legal. Yeah, that's why I don't well, understand. Well, it sounds to me like that's going to probably be our look at it. I'm going to call Joe when we get out of here, but if we yeah. can't get anywhere, I'm just going to tell him no, I'm going we can either do this civilly or this is the route we're going to have to go because. Or we'll close it and take it out. Yeah. One of the, you know, get nothing. it's at, uh, yeah, I don't know what else. It's posted right now, put it that way. I'm not going to say how much because I don't, I can't remember. But definitely not for a semi. No, you cannot drive a semi over it. I'm not sure. Empty, I really three I've seen options. Them. Three options, right? Dave. There's three options. Right. You close it, you do, you, you uh, do the repairs or the replacement the easy way. Or you do it the hard way right well whether and closing it right now because I, I don't think the bridge is i mean the bridge can still be traveled oh, yeah. yeah but they're wanting to take semis across it too which they sure. legally can't i i mean yeah it's going to be an inconvenience for a year or and for the rest their, of their life it depends on how right. they want to it's all only arguments or township arguments it's <laughs> only about three or four uh miles from where the sprayer went through a year or two ago. Oh, that's, that's through like a yeah. This is just half like four, south four miles out or so. Yeah. This is like half mile south 46. Yeah. That was south of the city. Was yeah. It? Yeah, I know right where this is, but I thought the sprayer was just- No, sprayer is just a mile north of Tabernacle. Yeah, The old okay. Tabernacle Church. Anyway, okay. that's my position. <laughs> I wish it was somebody else's position. <laughs> maybe we could get Turner County to come in. And maybe Take they want to move to Turner County. <laughs> okay. So we need to defer to next week then. Table this one too. Table it. Need a motion to table? Yeah. So done. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manny. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes. Motion passes. Legal action for ditching without permission on 304. And or 302. Was, sorry. 302. That was another question I had for Alexis. I don't know where we can go with that. I, I looked after talking with Dick yesterday about the next subject. I kind of looked in there. There's something in the state. I mean, there's a couple state statutes that say they can't be changing the grade in the ditch and all that stuff, whether, you know, it's a class two misdemeanor, what are we going to do? We're going to have to push the dirt back in. It's already loose. The trench is already dug and they fill it back full of dirt first rain. We get, you know, where the water's going to go. Yeah. But I don't are, know are we going to get that first rain? Huh? Maybe not. <laughs> There's water standing in it when I took the picture because the tile is running. Right. But if you notice the beacon photo, so there is quite a ditch coming in on the right hand side of the photo. And that's where most of the water was running out in the field, you know, comes out into the field. So now 28. So now they're trying to divert it all over to the west. And I'm pretty sure they're planning on farming that little corner there now. But as you can see on the other pictures, it's pretty radical. It's quite a drop off. And these were all graded 2009 to a six to one because we use state money or federal money some of it to fix it, but most of it we built to the state standards. Uh, no, no they, did, they did it themselves. No, they got to take out one. But so that's something I wanted to talk to Lexi about. Two is if there's any legal. And I, I, my fault, I mean, I drive that road quite often from Wakanda. I take that road to Sioux Falls all the time. And yeah, they got me. I don't know when they did it, but Sunday afternoon. 
but it's pretty, no. you know, and so everybody drives by and sees that, doesn't it? Yeah. And they never asked me for permission. So I don't know if we have any legal recourse for that. Well, that's not only your fault, Rod. I saw them doing it. I just assumed they had permission. Uh, so it's uh, and I don't let anybody fresh. clean a county ditch. That was something else I was going to ask you. Instead of like Jerry Jensen, that is obvious. But I told him he was ready to dig it out last week. I told him I had to wait till Tuesday. Okay, do what you got to do. But is that something you guys want me to bring in every time? Or do you want me to make the decision I think, on the road? I think it's easier for you, for us to make that decision. Okay. So they're not sitting there going, well, Rod's playing favorites. And you can just have a, I don't know, a way out or whatever. It's not up, you know, just tell them it's not up to you. I don't, that's my thought. What do you, yeah. what's a real yeah, sense? I, I totally agree. I think that's because because I did I did one on my own North Wakanda. Well, just because it was a small little area, but yeah, okay. I mean that's when it gets like uh, the last one here. When it gets over a hundred feet, then it makes me nervous. Then well, maybe even if you hit one of those small little ones like that, you just let us know. Yeah, I do. Can can we do it by consensus through email? Is that legal? And then make it formal at the next meeting? Because there's times where we get a three week gap, yeah, and it might be the only time they have to to do yeah, it. I know, That's bad. but I don't know if we can legally. Do, can we do that? Is that? I don't know. Don't know. I'm looking at Sam. She's hiding. Sam's taking notes so that she can look at it later. <laughs> <laughs> Sam's and uh, which is which is fine. Table, table, table. <laughs> which is fine. You take notes yeah. and yeah, that's the best way. We don't have anything right now to. You don't really want to come off the top of your head very well. Yeah. No. no, that's it's, not a good idea. It really is a mess, though. You know, these yeah. oils piles uh, are just piled willy nilly. Yeah, at least they're all on their ground, but right. But, but now it's going to cut there. I've seen. Yeah. Make a mountain of water come across the ship. Bad idea. So we'll wait and see. Kind of sloppy uh, work, too. Alexis has to say about that, too. Did they cut into your slope on the on the road slope? That's what it looked like, but I couldn't tell. No. The back slope. The back slope? Back one, yeah. Yeah. They're outside the 10 foot safe zone. Yeah. I'd had the sheriff up there making a report on it. But yeah. uh, I'm complaining about it, but pretty sure there's nothing we can do about this one. It's the next one. When they get right next to the road and they dig it about eight feet straight down. Yeah. I'm not so positive that we can't do something about this one. Right, because they were supposed to get, they needed permission. There's got to be something. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. You know, and I, we put a lot of notices in the paper about. I'll mention it to this, Dan. Can't do that. And I was pretty sure I've never had nothing in there. Well, used to be a notice put out every year that any ditching out in the field, they had to call me. I had to go look at it before they cleaned it out and after that. But since the drainage board dissolved, why? There's no notice like that put in the paper, but there's more people who read the legals than I thought. So you I know, it, it, it might be helpful um, for Rod and um, <clears throat> Alexis to work together to come up with um, a procedure that, you know, will meet legal standards and cover Rod's um, back. <clears throat> that um you know rod can use going forward and then if the commission approved that procedure 
um, you know, then it could just kind of run run independently and come back to the commission when when Lexi deems it necessary. But I think having kind of a standard operating procedure, since this seems to happen um, periodically, would be uh, would save us all a lot of a lot of time and trouble. <clears throat> but I think it would have to be Alexis and and Rod that would propose it. I was advised with that. Yeah, yeah. I would, Good idea. I would also like to add more. More, more. We're going to come up with something. Yeah. Don't we have that though? I have a permit, but I got to ask me for it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Maybe you weren't here, but at Sorensen's out here, west of Holmes's, they got they stayed out in each field, but they still went under our road. Yeah. They bore it under the road and it's already done. And I don't know if they encased it. They encased under the eighth and clay and the railroad and Highway 50 because the guy welded the steel pipe out in the field, but just like that. And I want to have a talk to him yesterday. And then on the way, I was kind of late. I went west. I was going to go east. And this morning, when they come to the meeting, it's already done. Oh, they just did. It. Yeah, they had to do it yesterday. Or something. Well, you might want to mention it to them. If they did. Well, that would have, but they weren't there when I got by. You know what company it is? Well, I got an idea, but they'll be there when I. Yeah, they're hired by Clay Rural Water, and and they know. Yeah, I you know remember we had a flurry of Clay Rural Water crossing permits about a month ago, a little over a month ago, and. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I remember, you know, I could not remember that there was a crossing permit for down there. I didn't, I called Rod when they were up. I saw that they were going to be crossing under the railroad track and under the, the, the little bypass that goes to, up to join the uh, Highway 50. And I just checked with him for sure that that bypass was not our, we didn't have responsibility there. And we don't. <clears throat> but I saw that they were going straight south through the field. And uh, once they get to Timber Road, I know we have authority, and I don't remember there being a permit there. So I called him to check on that. That's how I got involved in that part. But Clay Rural Water knows that they need to encase it. Yeah, that. well, they know because, well, they just did six, six permits. You know? Well, that and they, this whole thing got, well, I know we really emphasized it when they did Wakanda. Yeah. A year ago or so. Because they were just gonna, those people were just gonna bore under it and didn't know they needed to case it. Yeah, right. And you know, on, on this procedures thing, on the procedures thing too. Really, we already have a procedure for uh, road uh, ditch work like this. Mm -hmm. You know, we already have a it's on the uh, web ordinance. You know, ordinance that, that that's illegal to mess with it out in the ditch. And uh, from time to time, Rod finds one. And uh, he, he follows the procedure he ought to. He comes to the board and alerts us to it, brings pictures, shows us what the deal is. Sometimes we might have to drive out and have a personal look. And, and uh, we've had uh, actually had folks that did this come in and we dress them down right in the meeting. Because mm -hmm. what is it? Ignorance is no excuse for, well, oh, what is that saying yeah. on, on the law? Yes. Yeah. It is easier sometimes to get forgiveness than permission. However, it's not safer. No. Usually not for me. But on 302, I think I think that one we're gonna have to, I mean, it's it's gonna be better if we tell them you need to come up with a with a plan to fix sure. this. <laughs> sure. And well, see what they come up with. If that was drainage just wasn't meant to be there. Across, we wanted to put a culvert under the road. When we built a new road, we had to put two culverts in there because there's two drainage ditches. Now they want to make one divert it all over using the county road ditch mm -hmm. when it goes into one in their field. Right. So they want it in the ditch instead of in the field. And they are in our right. The sign. Yep. Maybe, maybe it's on one of you guys' pictures. But yeah. Mine is. Oh yeah, on there, but the sign is on the other side of where it's good. So, yeah. And I don't know. I, I I heard the name. They got a lot of ground along there. 
but yeah, the sign's maybe. just visible on one edge of the photo. Yeah. I tried to get it. Yeah. Well, it ought not to have happened. That's, that's just it. So okay. There's another one we'll wait for Alexa. She can be busy. Yeah. Or Sam. She's gonna have a, both. She's gonna have a busy meeting. <laughs> the regulations for artesian wells draining into road ditches. Yeah, that found, must be that one too you're talking about. No, uh, no, I found out there's pretty much nothing. Yeah. He said there's he gave me some statutes and we talked on the phone and there's just nothing there with any teeth in it. Oh, as far as being able to do something. Yeah. It actually the State Water Rights Commission has a rule uh, under ASRD 74 that if there's an artesian flow, a uh, landowner must restrict it to a minimum flow or five gallons a minute, whatever will keep, keep it from freezing up over winter. Uh, but uh, they, I don't, I, I know of a couple of places where they have uh, can't come out and looked at it and dressed them down, but uh, uh, they really don't have much authority when it comes down to that. They don't have a, a means of, of finding them or, or giving them a, a misdemeanor for that particular offense. Is, the, <clears throat> is that, because we're talking the one on 302. <laughs> we're talking same ground. I didn't realize it, but it's you know, 500 feet or less west of this ditch. Only it's on the north side of the road. Is that the one where in the grass area? Yeah, and, and it runs, they ditched it out to drain into the ditch. And we, when they, when we did the road, it was backfilled in there and it run, there was a little creek run inside, goes to the east to the west of those two pipes we just looked at. Now they got a trench, not with a, somebody just dug it by hand. So it runs in the ditch and it's kind of low there. And I went to walk out to look at it and if I took one more step, I did. And there's a lot of water sitting in the ditch. It's hard on the road, but it's not a lot of water. And we talked about this once, oh, a long time ago. I'm sure when you redid the road. <clears throat> and I, you know, seemed to me like what he told me is five gallons a minute. And I think it was running harder then than it is now. So I'm wondering if they didn't tap it. And it's, but, it, you know, it's still draining into the road ditch. It was running <laughs> down there. The only other thing, you know, it would be nice if they could run a small tile from there down to the thing to get it out of the road ditch. But so far. Or cap it. Yeah. Because, you know, this one's on Hadeen's too. Because there is one on to the west of that one. Right. I think there's one in the old mart pasture where all those cattails are. Yep. But I can't. But that one actually has a pump jack on it. Or does? Because the cattails and Frank Mighty's are so tall in there right. that I can, but I just assume because the ditch is wet from that one also. So if they're not using the wells, aren't they considered abandoned then? Uh, Yes, there's a 1955 law that says that that uh, if you're not using a, a well like that, you you're and it's flowing, you should cap it. And in fact, there was uh, money uh, that was called for in that same statute from the state to, as a matching matching to help uh, the landowner plug those. There's never been a penny of money in that that fund since 1955. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, no, there's uh, so there's no teeth in that. So there's no teeth in that either, really. There are, uh, for instance, to give you an idea how serious it can be, out uh, just east of Chamberlain on I-90, uh, Rod's seen the well. I'm thinking of there's one on the South Road ditch uh, in I-90. In the winter time, it makes a nice uh, ice Christmas tree. It's about 
hundred feet off the road. The one you pointed out. I-90, yes, yes. I pointed it out to you on a tri the trip to yep. here. Well, that, uh, that actually, uh, when it was drilled back 115, 20 years ago, it actually doubled the size of Red Lake. There are actual farmsteads that were inundated. So, it, and that's uh, during that's the time. Yeah. yeah, that's during the time when they were worried about flowing wells more. But uh, still, there really isn't anything with teeth in it that I know of. That, uh, What's it roughly cost to plug one? Uh, or does that vary too widely? Uh, it varies a lot, but uh, generally, most of them would be 1500 bucks or, or less. I've done a lot of them. I've plugged a lot of them where they are a nuisance. On this one, I think I told Rod yesterday, if it is something that's damaging our road, you know, uh, where you're causing uh, damage to a neighbor's property by something that you own on your property, you know, that there's uh, damage damages that you could uh, perhaps get recourse in court. I'm pretty sure there's not enough there that would stand up. You know, just we have the cattails in the ditch. We'd be. <laughs> If My personal thought is we'd be better off to split the cost with them. Yeah. They'd be cheaper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, the, the other part is that plugging flowing wells like that, there's no guarantee. No. The, the best way to plug them is to try and save them. Yeah. I've, <laughs> I've seen that. too many. I've They've done a number of them. Yeah. Recap or reline and it kills them. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You it actually run a, just use, uh, if you can get a, a grout tube down it, a polyethylene grout tube and get it uh, as deep as you can and then pump grout through it. And uh, uh, that that's the best way to plug them. And uh, uh, I've done a number of them that have been successful. I've had a few that failed. I've had a few that made it worse where it would surface 30 feet away. I had one, I had one where it surfaced 30, 30 or 40 feet away in the guy's yard. Oh, uh, but uh, yeah, it can be done and they can be made so that it makes the well usable again, using that same method. Just jet the grout out of the inside of the pipe, put a valve on the top. But these two would be, there's no, there's no use. No, of them. no need. If there's no need for the well, you wouldn't do that. No. We have one north of Mecklen too, south of the Clay Creek on the west side of the road, same way. But that actually drains to the crypt sooner or later, but again, it causes cattails. We have to go ahead and mow it down every year and try for snow, you know. Was this on Morris, that one? No, just right south of the creek on the west side of the road. Oh, okay. Know who that is, but you go down a couple hundred feet on the, right there on the outside of the ditch. And there's a number of them in the laterals. But um, yeah, I, while I was up taking pictures of this, that I noticed that well. And I thought, well, I'm going to find out. And I couldn't find anything on DNRs. I called him to see if, where to go. And then he sent me to the thing. And yeah, that's pretty much. And there's supporting statute for that, too. I, 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 gave, I gave him the supporting statute. Yeah, the statutes are, well, there is a. SDER Chapter 74, the codified law 46 615, which doesn't tell you a whole lot. Yeah. But the administrative rule one pretty much says there ain't much you can do about it. So. But the bottom line is they're not really causing any structural issues with our road at all. Are they? Uh, it's more of a nuisance. Yeah. And, you know, it gets softer because, you know, in those wet years, it was already soaked yeah. and wet. So just it compounds the problem. The other thing that it does, it's often when there's a warm water in a road ditch like that, it keeps that ground thawed at that location where it's frozen up under other parts of the roadway. And so you can end up with a soft spot uh, because of that. 
Yeah. And we don't have anything like that. There is no, we've been lucky, no frost either or anything. Right. right, you know, now. Yeah. And this was a it was worse before. Oh. We reconstructed road because I think that was like 09, 2010. And I think something was done with that well at that time, maybe, because it seemed like it got less flow after that. But Well, we beat that horse pretty hard. Mm -hmm. So let's move to bridge removal resolution, not to include structure. 14 130 176. Yeah, I apologize for not having a map with me. But so you have four of them there. So the one that does not, or the one that has the structure number 130 176 has already been done. So the other three are the ones that need to be signed. And so they already, they already did those at the last meeting. And then I sent them to Brad. Oh, so then we just eliminate, for the record, this is the one that did Yeah, include. basically. Yeah. yeah, this one that's east of the Manning feedlot. And south. Yeah. No, this is straight south. One south, okay. Feedlot. So technically all we did was approve it twice. Right. Yeah. Right. So do we need to undo it? I don't think so. I mean, I guess there's no harm in approving something twice. You're... I just want to make you aware that yep. was the one that was already has already been approved for removal. Well, if we if we do this, if we ask to have it uh, removed from that a resolution just to, uh, acknowledging that that doesn't include that structure, that lets them know that uh, we noticed and we're not we're not asking them to pay for it twice. Yeah. Well, they they'll. No, I'm sure Brad and Morgan only sent in three of them. Morgan, are you? I, you only yep. sent in the three this time, correct? Yep. Yep. He just sent in the three. He didn't include that that fourth one that's already been done, and he's already got those submitted and everything. So. Okay, we're in the clear then. So if we wanted anything for our minutes, we could just say that we've already approved that yeah. one. That one instead of. Instead of removing it, so somebody doesn't get confused, going, "You yeah. couldn't take it out." It says right here that you took it off of there. We're acknowledging that that is one that we're not uh, including in that request, but that that has already been yeah approved to be removed. And that was my mistake last week. Okay, uh, local transportation study update. Okay, so we've been approved for that local transportation study that we applied for a month ago or whenever. Um, the road studies, the bike paths, the asphalt, pretty much everything. Um, we were awarded that. Uh, so now it'll take them a couple months, they said, to get the paperwork all put together. So right now, they tentatively approved us for $150,000 to do the study at 30,000 of the cost to us. That's the starting point. It might be, it won't be more, it could be less. So in a couple of months, they'll send me the paperwork or carry. And then we have to sign an agreement with the state like we do on quite a few things to proceed from there. So just so I let you know that they did approve our application. Yeah. And at that, at that time, we'll have the price, what our share would be. Yeah, yeah, at that time, I believe, yes, I'm not positive, but I know it won't be any more than $30,000. Okay. Which we kind of knew up front. That's what we put on the application also. That was the max I wanted to do. Okay. So. Great. Any further discussion? Okay. Uh, Gordon Anderson cleaned 250 feet of ditch on the east side of Greenfield, yeah. north of 299. And that's 
not correct. It should be west side of the ditch. I put it in there wrong. But yes, it definitely needs to be cleaned to get the water to run back down. It's cut a trench out in the field where it used to be. The ditch is all silted in and he's gonna clean it out back to the creek where it belongs. And I, he's gonna, he'll reseed it. And another one of those things, he was sitting there ready to go last Thursday and I told him I had to wait till today. So I, I recommend that we approve it. So you've, you've told him how deep he can go and, okay. So moved. Second. A motion and a second, any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Your mic's off, Betty. Yes. <laughs> Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes, motion passes. Anything uh, else? That's all for me. Anybody have anything for Rod? Except for apparently I have to come to the ditch board meeting. <laughs> That's right. It's required. And we don't even get chicken this year. <laughs> no chicken this year. Yeah. Will that ditch board meeting be available on Zoom? I don't think so. They don't have the technology at the 4 H Center. It's in the big room at the 4 H Center, so it'd be pretty tough. So I assume, Betty, you're not going to be able to make it, correct? Right. Not, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm out here with my mom who's had a few bad falls. <clears throat> yep. Uh, Phyllis, are you going to be able I, to make it or not? I was planning not to make it this year. Okay. Are Dick and Mike, are you? Okay. Yeah. So we're covered then. Good. Is Thank you. Yankton too. Yankton too. So we probably need to go ahead of time and set up, don't we? I don't, I don't know what the 4-H center looks like right now, but. Oh, well, they got, they'll probably have it set up for 4-H kids and yeah. targets. And no, they, they take the targets down every every Sunday. Oh, well, we had to take them down when we had our M-Shop meeting up there. Really? But it took about 10 minutes to set up okay. chairs and tables are right there. It'll be pretty easy. Okay. I'll be there earlier. So. I, I do have one question. The yep. Joint powers amendment for the landfill, is that anything I need to? I don't think so. Stick around for or we're still there's really There's nothing. What? That's, what? Phyllis, that's, you can explain that. That's just between the two counties, correct? And cities? Two counties, two cities, just need to agree to it. Correct. Yep. Okay. I mean, nothing has changed, correct? I doubt it's it. still going to be, that's the only thing I was worried about as long as they just stay on the bluff road. Yeah, that, this doesn't have anything to do with the roads. Okay, okay. This is just operations. Okay. Thank you. Thank Thanks you, lot, sir. Rod. See you at one. I know. <laughs> is that, I thought it was three. <laughs> we'll wait for you. <laughs> 12.30, actually. <laughs> Bring a new notebook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, did everybody get my report? Is this on? Uh, the button's got to be up. There you go. OK, did everybody get my report? Carrie, you did send it out? Yeah. OK. I guess, if, does anybody have any questions? Because I could read it to you, but I think you can all read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious which, which uh, Vermilion neighborhoods had increased values. Uh, the land on um, one of the neighborhoods in Bliss Point and then on Mickelson Street. Okay, got it. Thank you. So the median ratio actually went down. Yeah, unfortunately, because the houses are selling for more than we, what we can keep them assessed at, because it is a buyer's market right now. Everybody's buying. And I know there's been a couple of houses that 
there's been a bidding war on. So they, they've sold for more than what they were asking for. Really? Wow. Yeah, that's happening across the country. Wow. Two houses back, we had that. We were fortunate to have that when we were selling. <laughs> Yeah, if you're the seller, that's a yeah. good thing. <laughs> yeah, as long as you don't need to go buy somewhere else, though. Yeah. Well, that was a restoration where we stored the house to pretty nice shape, so. Agland actually went down. Yep. I just saw an article in the, was that in the P&D that uh, Agland went up in northeast Nebraska, right across the river? Everything has. Yeah. I mean, quite a bit. It's been up here quite a bit. Yeah. See, in South Dakota, uses a productivity system where they do the top, they do the eight year Olympic average and throw out the top and the bottom. Right. So we had some very bad, I shouldn't say bad, but lower yields for a few years back. The prices from the 2012 prices, yes. and 2013 were high. Yes. Yeah. And we lost those. No. Yeah. So. That's why I did it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. And then, you know, last spring that you had suggested that we don't go into any more houses. What are your thoughts when we're thinking about what we're gonna do this summer for work projects? Um, by the end of the, the month, we will all be fully vaccinated in our office. Um, I think if you're okay with going in and they're okay with allowing you in, okay. I, yeah. I can't imagine somebody's going to have a problem if they're trying to dispute something that you're are assuming is in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, we're going to have to, we're going to have to start going okay. back to, yeah, but, okay. but you're thinking of your regular rotation too, where you go, right. go in every right. X right. number of years. Yeah. Yeah. So, and which those, is way, we're way behind on that because of all the different things that have been going on. We did finish up, going sent out questionnaires to the rest of the city of Vermillion. We did finish that up as a big project, <laughs> even though it was, and then Bill and Laura went out and pictured everything and then getting everything into the computer. So, and now we're, we're hoping to get um, ProVal. Well, we're going to get ProVal and go to that. So that'll be done. Hopefully do a, and we're gonna have to do a lot of modeling and stuff to get the neighborhoods and cost and stuff. But, and then there's a new soil survey out. Um, I've only gone through like two townships in looking at it, but I don't think ours is going to have a whole lot of changes. Um, there's some, there was one, I noticed a, the soil type totally changed in one section, but otherwise, most of them is just minor tweaks to the area that it had. So, but that's which, one of the, our plans to get that implemented. Yeah, which townships did you look at? I look, I've i looked at um, Glenwood and I'm just finishing up Riverside looking at. So, cause we don't wanna lose any difference in, in that, in value, if we can help it. Anything else, Anna? No. Um, and I, I guess um, just that um, all three of us will be going to conference the end of May, and Jean is gonna has agreed to come in and and sit. But we'll probably do ten to noon and one to four, if that is agreeable. Yeah. And we've just about got our beacon fully operational out of ProVal. They're working on the last few links for that. I know it's been a long time coming. So you only have one appeal this year? Um, one actual appeal. It's an Agland appeal. Otherwise, they've all been recommendations. So. Um, That's good. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, so we should be out of here next Tuesday by like 2.30, 3 at the latest, I'm thinking. 
but today is the last day, so I can still be getting sure. letters in today. So, and if they're mailed Thursday, yep. Well, so, but they have to be postmarked by today. Okay. So, now for next year, because they passed a new law on ag land that if it's not, what is it, 10% of its assessed value, if they're not grossing that off of there, it loses its ag land status. Are you aware of that? Yeah, one? I know they, I did that pass. Yes, as um, far as I know. The last I knew they were still tweaking on it. Okay. But I don't know, um, but that's smaller, that's anything under 20 acres. Oh, is that how that? Yeah, it's the way I understand it. And, but because the first thing, it has to be used for egg. It has to be farmed and they added some, some new, or they were talking about adding new, like horses never used to count and trees never counted as an agricultural pursuit. Um, and they were trying to add all that in. They had like three different versions and I'm not sure which one passed. Because I was just wondering that all that WRP ground that we have in the county now. And that does not change any of that. That kind of, Anything that's in a conservation easement, they have not changed the criteria for that. Okay. It's still assessed at what the soil types are. So if the soil type is, is a crop soil, it's still rated as a crop. Okay. And has a value. So it's basically for the little acreages and stuff like that. Right, right. Yeah, pretty much anything, because then um, something about if they're within 20 miles of, say you have a two acre piece here and you're within 20 miles, that two acre piece can still be considered egg if it's being used, if you own other agricultural pro property. No, nothing like confusing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really. Yeah, and I think that was one of the hardest things about deciding which way we should support it as, as from our office, because they all came out at different. The um, one, Kirk Shafee, that did the um, first one, he used to be the director out in Meade County. So a lot of this was directed for Meade County, where I think their minimum acreage is 160 acres. Okay. So yeah. the the tree assessment thing is uh, that for like Christmas trees, or that be like a wooded lot, or say if you had ten acres that were all trees and you had it in conservation reserve, is that ag land or tree land then? I uh, I think they're talking timber. Okay. Not so much trees. Uh, trees like a shelter belt. Trees is a crop because they're of timber. Yeah. See, and it's mainly out there because we don't have anybody here that does it for timber. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking like Christmas tree farm or something like that. I would think that would count as agricultural. Yeah. But I, I'll i have to check into- It should, it falls under the Department of Ag. You think, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I, I know we do have one and I can't tell you how we, I think that that's less than 20 acres. So I know we have one here, but I'm not sure how it's rated off the top of my head. So, okay. Any other questions for me? Nope. Oh, thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Drew. Yeah. Uh, Platt for Patricia Bancroft. Uh, down there by Burbank. Uh, the only reason this is coming for the board is it's got a right of way dedication. It's got what? A uh, right of way dedication. Oh, yeah. I was a little surprised. I didn't see on his survey. You know, since it's such odd shaped that he didn't have those other corners marked. Which other the which other corners? The interior ones. You know, there's a uh, uh, a squiggle on the property line there, and the 
say on the one that they're working on the south the south boundary is not straight it's got one two three bends in it i was wondering why it doesn't probably doesn't matter to us but uh uh the way it's surveyed how do you know uh what the actual dimensions of this thing is you see what i'm thinking of there Drew? Notice there's pins in the upper, there's a found pin in the, what is that? Found pin in the upper left side of the plot. There's a set pin in the upper right. And then there's a series of them along the right of way. But dividing Bancroft tract one from <coughs> Bancroft tract Two, I, I, I just thought that you'd end up with uh, survey points where there are irregularities in that south property line. Do you see what I'm? You're talking on the north side of Bancroft one. Correct. Where it yeah, does that. Right, yeah. Now, oh. is, it, is it because it was platted just for platting and not for resale? Or, or are we not looking at it right? Well, this is just for the track two. Yeah, but we don't we don't know the all the dimensions of track uh, track two if we don't know what the what, oh, what that property line is. It's everything is everything that's we're doing right now is yep. just south of the road, nothing north of the road. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If you look at the location map, the very gotcha. bottom uh, right corner. Yeah, it's just that little shaded bit. Okay, that and triangle. If you, and if you flick over to the beacon sheet. Okay. It's just oh, all that okay. little triangle south of the road there. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, well, what made me uh, uh, think about that is that, that the guy had found a pin or found one pin in the northeast, northwest corner of the, that plot and then put a new one in in the northwest, northeast corner and uh, of the whole plot. And why would he do that if he did not find those other property corners. There was something in that, I can't remember what it was, but there was something where he had a, there was a struggle in that Northeast part of that curve. Yeah. And I don't yeah. remember what it was uh, for finding that right. I can't remember what that was though. So that was something we had, he had to go back on to get that worked out. Cause originally he didn't even want to do the right of way on this. He really resisted, but that's why we had to go back and he had to redo part of it. But as far as, yeah, okay. I, yeah, I don't know that. Okay. Yeah. For this plot, I guess it doesn't matter at all. Okay. Wishes? Move to approve the plot. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes. Motion passes. Then Drew, you had um, welfare. Yeah. Um, however you want to, I forget how we even put it on here. Help. Yeah. Legal help. Yeah, legal help. All right. So for for dealing with county welfare, specifically dealing with our fund with one hospital and one attorney, um, I really need some help dealing with this. And I think our my office and state's attorney's office could maybe use some help. Uh, there is a contractor now, uh, an independent consultant who's uh, used to be a county welfare officer for Coddington County who's now set herself up as a uh, independent consultant who's advising for first now just Hand County uh, last month. And uh, possibly you might be interested. I got I haven't even talked to her yet, but I would at least uh, touch base with the board, maybe explore the possibility of uh, contracting with her to get some consulting for us. Cause me dealing with that uh, hospital and that attorney, I am way 
way out of my depth on trying to deal with that. Um, I'm dealing with one right now. It's been six, eight months of dealing with it, and uh, hopefully we stay out of court on it. Uh, he laughs. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> she's laughing. She isn't. She, she's yeah. in a file. <laughs> well, I know that uh, we've had issues with this set of, of uh, parties before. While I've been on the board, I think at least twice, maybe three times. Mm -hmm. So it, it does come up uh, uh, periodically. And this particular uh, health provider and in an attorney is always the ones that are the issue. We never have, we haven't had troubles that I know of that have made it to the board uh, on anyone else. The other hospitals in the area don't use this process anymore. It's not worth their time or money to do it. And they're easier to get along with. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the other, no, they, the other hospitals completely abandoned it. They don't even do this anymore. Really? Nope. Don't even. They've abandoned it. And the problem hospital has now reached an agreement with Minnehaha and Lincoln that has streamlined their process. And the thing that's got me terrified is this problem lawyer is going to have free time now. <laughs> Do you have any idea how much time you need from? Not much. We max, I think, might have five or six cases a year to deal with. And I had none last year. With do with COVID, it, well, one last year. Uh, so we're not talking a lot. Um, but again, I, I this has been kicking my butt up and down. So, so at twenty five bucks an hour, should be should we approve him for up to two thousand dollars? That's eighty hours worth. I'd go for that for the year and see what happens, and then just put it in the budget for next year. Yeah, at least uh, maybe not approval for that, just as a. a at least open negotiation. Okay. Yeah, because then yeah. I can have the contract ready for maybe next. Because we could we could make a motion to to uh, authorize up to two thousand dollars in in uh, expenses for that consultant if if that will work for you. I, can we do that, uh, Carrie? Yeah, he's on the agenda. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'd make such a motion. That gets it. That gets it back in your court. And yeah. when you need more from us, come. Well, I will reach out to her today if I can get a hold of her and see what we can start working on this. So. I'll second that motion. A motion and a second. Do I have any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Mockler. Yes. Motion passes. Packard. Sorry, oh, I missed sorry the list. <laughs> hey, I'm out here. <laughs> I'm just used to being the last one. Um, anything else, Drew? No one. Thank you much. Let's see. Lane, you have a drone policy, was it? Yeah. And then I'll have a couple other items that don't need any decisions, just informational. But yep. um, Carrie sent the drone policy out. Uh, Alexis and I have talked about it. Um, this stems from a couple things, but uh, basically, there's an option instead of taking the pilot's test every two years, we can do it through a certificate of authorization through the FAA, uh, and that licensing lasts three years. And instead of $150 for a test, it's $50. So it's a considerable savings. My problem becomes... Uh, I think it's good for like Dennis and I who have taken the test, but ultimately it's a liability issue for the commission and the county. I think every new pilot should take the training and take the written pilots test um, just to make sure that they do have knowledge of laws, regulations, airspace, and all that. Um, so really the change would be from requiring that written test every two years to once you've passed that, being able to become a pilot through the other option, which is um, savings and money and also a extended length of licensure. But 
again, I think it's your decision because ultimately it's liability on the county. Um, and I have no idea how many pilots Dennis wants to try to run through, but I will maintain my maximum of four. Yeah, that sounds good. So you want, want it to change the policy to any new pilots, go through the written process and get the two-year license. And then after that, they can just do the renewal that's good for three years? Correct. Okay. Um, with that, uh, just so you know, I think they need to go through the training too. Uh, Frontier Precision, who did ours a few years back, um, they still do it. And it's about $400 a person to go through the class. Uh, and to take the written test is $150, whether you pass or not. So if it takes you three times to do a written test, it's $450. Um, I pay, I always paid for my pilots, the one they passed. <laughs> so if it took them three times, it cost them $300 and we paid for the one that they passed. Um, I think that's still reasonable, but I guess I don't think Dennis is there, but it, uh, you know, if he's got a problem, he can talk to you guys about that. So I think that's a good policy. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, I, I, my question was um, about uh, where the drone will be stored, if it'll, you know, uh, have a secure um, storage capacity. Um, we already have a drone program. The drone is, at, is in my office which is behind a locked door where only police officers can get into the lobby. And then it's behind another locked door in my office. Uh, currently, Dennis and I are the only ones uh, who are licensed pilots. And he has the code to get into my office, but dispatch has to allow him into the hallway. So even then he can't just come and get it. Great, thanks. Um, I guess my other question was um, about the Missouri River because it looks like um, the National Park Service um, excludes um, excludes you from it without permission. How, how does that work? Um, do you want the legal answer or the reality answer? Oh, I'll take the reality answer, thanks. The, the reality answer is I asked for um, a waiver three or four years ago. And what I was told was that will take a considerable amount of time. The Park Service owns the river and up to the high water mark. Other than that, that is not their land. If you take off outside of their land and fly over, that is what happens happens. So uh, officially, you're right. It's a gotcha. National Park Service and we can't fly there. Unofficially, they gave me permission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it just strikes me that that's a place where search and rescue would be kind of critical. <laughs> yes. Um, they mainly do that for places like Mount Rushmore and things like that. And it just happens to fall into that category. Gotcha, thanks. So Lane, do you want to, we don't have that wording, right? In, for the handbook? We do. No. So no. do you want to get that together and we approve it next meeting? Yeah, I can do that. I can change it in the policy book. Okay. Um, and we can improve it. Yeah, that'd be fine. So I'll do that. And then this is this is a question for the commission members um, because I'm new. Does um, uh, does the other department um, that has these have a similar policy, written policy? For what? The the only other department that has a drone is Highway, and mm -hmm. I have no idea what they have for a written policy. Yeah, we, um, we, I can. I can tell you that I've been told by several people, including Frontier Precision, that mine is more extensive than anybody else's around. 
And mainly because once I started, it seemed silly not to throw in there, don't drink and fly, but nobody else has that. Um, so they, if the highway department wants to adopt it, they can. Um, my issue really becomes when it's a law enforcement thing. We have to, there are guidelines that we have to follow for evidentiary things. Mm -hmm. So that's why it ended up being really as extensive as it did on my part. Um, the other thing is, is safety benefits does not insure drones. So I have an additional policy through Jensen's up in Beersford uh, for liability. So it's $500 a year. I just got the thing. It's $511 this year. Uh, mainly that's for if there's a failure and it falls out of the sky and whaps somebody in the head or something. So, um, and again, I don't know if the highway department has a separate policy or not for it. Is that policy for you uh, personally, Lane, or, or for the department? No, I, I list the pilots. Okay. So it'll, it'll be for the aircraft and the pilots, which is why I require the pilots to be county employees for the liability pur purposes and because of the law enforcement thing, uh, work comp, if something would happen to happen out at a scene and somebody gets hurt. Yeah, I think we might want to ask the highway department for a similar policy. I mean, this, this one seemed really clear, sensible, thorough, um, and uh, I, I would be concerned about um, uh, both departments having, having written policies and procedures. Any further discussion? This Anything? one's this one's labeled small unmanned aircraft program policy and procedure manual for Clay County, South Dakota. Uh, I would think that it could and should apply to highway department. I think we can. I think we can adopt it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Because so as far as the the flying and or the the drinking and flying, I mean that's that's in the handbook. That's no different than climbing in one of our vehicles. Yeah. If you've been drinking. Got the so. 12, 12 hour exclusion zone, just like an airline pilot. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I think it does say at the end of the policy that it doesn't specific, it doesn't apply to highway. So we'd have to, uh, we'd have to make an amendment that said um, that these rules will also apply to highway. Right, I did that just because it's one of those things where because of the evidentiary, evidentiary things, uh, when you fly for me or I fly, there's guidelines that they don't really have to worry about out there. So, but you want to run will, that? Yeah, ahead. I will rewrite that and change that and get it to you for a vote next week then. Can you run that past Dennis too? Yep. In case you have any comments. Yep, I will do that. Since, gonna, since he's gonna have to follow this one also. Yep. Um, and he's listed as one of my pilots, so he is aware of that policy. He has a copy of that anyway. Okay. Um, just a couple informational things. Yankton County issue, Commission issued a burn ban last night. So maybe start getting that on your radar, uh, depending upon how much rain we get over the next couple, three days. Uh, The big issue is going to be timing. Because uh, if we don't put one in place next week, you know, we got to wait till the end of the month. And if we, and if it's no rain until the end of the month, you know what it's going to look like out there. But we do follow the red flag ordinance. I mean, we've Correct. already, that, that's a year round one we do. Correct. So, I mean, if it's, if it falls into a red flag, they can't burn anyway. Correct. Are, are you um, thinking of a notification uh, issue uh, lane where we put a notification in the uh, newspaper? Right. The commission can still put a burn ban on, which okay. eliminates burning even on non-red flag days, uh, which is what Yankton County did last night. Um, I have gotten one back, one email back from Callahan, uh, Vermilion Fire, 
uh, if things don't change, I think we will need to do that. Um, so again, it's not necessarily anything that we have to do today or next week, but it's getting pretty, pretty dry out there. So something to think about. Can we, what, allow you to put one on if things change or don't change as case may be between now and uh, the it's got to be a resolution through you guys. Okay. Otherwise, the red flag one takes care of it. It sounds, Phyllis, tell me if I'm right, like you're proposing um, a, a, a resolution that would um, allow um, Lane to declare a burn ban if um, dry conditions uh, warrant it on any given day. Correct, but it's not on the agenda, so we can't do that either. Right. <laughs> and some of that, which is why we, on the any given day, that's why we put the red flag ordinance in a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, the problem becomes if I'm, if I happen to be out of town, I can't do that. So the, when the commission puts in a burn ban, it's for until further notice, until you guys rescind it. Uh, so it's not a hit and miss thing. It's, it's a ban across for, I mean, when you're talking weeks, mm -hmm. potentially. Pray for rain. Uh, we're supposed to be somewhere between an inch to two inches or through Thursday, so. It was supposed to rain last night too. Yeah. It was. And the uh, first thunderstorm warning of the year that I've seen went out in Knox County last night. So it was just to, just to the south of us. And, and there was a portion of Minnehaha County. Oh, I didn't see that one. Yeah. Lyon and Lyon and uh, Lyon County in Northwest Iowa and a couple others. Okay. Uh, the only other thing I have is Travis, have you heard anything about the generator? No, I guess I haven't. You took okay. it up there though? Yeah, it's been up there for three weeks or so, probably now. I'll, I'll, get I'll see where they're at. Okay. All right. And that's it, unless you got more for me. I don't. Anybody else? No. Thanks, Lane. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, vouchers and payroll. Everybody get to see those? Mm -hmm. Take a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the vouchers and the payroll. Okay. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes, motion passes. Joint powers of amendment for landfill. Phyllis, do you know what the amendment is? Yes. Uh, basically, whenever there is a new grant or state revolving loan um, needed or awarded to the landfill, we need to make a new amendment to the Joint Powers Agreement. The Joint Powers is Yankton County, Clay County, City of Yankton, City of Vermilion are basically the funding or ownership of the landfill recycling system. Um, currently, there's a $1,900,066 state revolving loan fund that has been awarded for the closure of cells two and three, I believe, and construction of cell six at the landfill. And with each of these new awards, there has been, um, this is the eighth amendment to the agreement that requires that we must remain partners until all debts are paid. It's basically what the amendment is. Any questions? Beyond that? How long do they think the landfill will they have enough room where they're at presently? Do you have any idea, Phyllis? I just had a curiosity. 
Ah, ba -da -ba -da. It's all right. Me okay. Five years ago, I would have had it right in the top of my head. Yeah, I was just curious. <laughs> it. Do I say I feel they should have bought land quite a while ago? And I won't go further than that. Okay, <laughs> that answered my question. <laughs> <laughs> You got I'll, a motion? I'll make a motion to uh, approve the amendment. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes. Motion passes. Uh, there's a joint jurisdiction meeting Thursday. And then I don't think we have anything for executive session. Does anybody have anything else? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. A motion and a second. Roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes, we're adjourned. Thank you. See you in a little while. See you guys. Well, we won't see any of them. No, no. I guess not. Sorry. <laughs>